everyone, I'm Brandi Van Patten, the content manager here at EMS Environmental, and I'm speaking with the president of EMS Environmental, Alan Blanchard. We're going to talk about phase one environmental site assessments today, and we'll cover everything from what exactly it is, to who may need one, how they're conducted, and how we can help you perform in phase one ESA on your property. So, Alan, a good starting point would be for you to explain what exactly a Phase 1 ESA is and who may need one. We get a lot of questions on this. I just got one the other day. People call up and say, the bank wants me to get a Phase 1 before they'll give me this loan. Why do I need this? And the reason is because in 1980, the Superfund legislation came about, and that legislation um, was designed for responsible parties to conduct cleanups on their properties. Now the joint and several liability provisions made it that anybody associated with the property was potentially liable for a cleanup. So um, <clears throat> a few years later, the uh, bound film amendments came out and that allowed uh, purchasers to um, get a potential um, innocent purchaser defense. And that's why the phase one came about. Um, there's an international organization called ASTM, which is an uh, international testing and standards organization. They created the Phase 1 standard that we all use to conduct Phase 1s. So EPA later said that if you conduct all appropriate inquiry into the history of a site, you um, could utilize this innocent purchaser defense so that you wouldn't necessarily be responsible for any contamination on the property. Now, to do that, what we have to do as part of this Phase 1 ESA, we call them, instead of Environmental Site Assessment, we call them ESA because in this business we like three-letter acronyms. So we have that. We have um, EPA, or Environmental Protection Agency. Um, some states have a DEP, Department of Environmental Protection. We have EMS, because we have Environmental Management Services. And then there's TLA. What's TLA? <laughs> TLA is three-letter acronym for three-letter acronyms. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so back to phase ones. Um, what we'll do for a phase one, we first look at the history of a property. We look at government databases to see if there are any environmental liens, environmental actions, environmental permits. We also look at old air photos, old insurance maps to find out where things were. We look at the chain of title. Sometimes company names can give us um, an idea of the types of processes that may have happened on those facilities. Then our inspectors will go in, we'll look for areas like um, distressed vegetation, chemical storage, uh, evidence of underground storage tanks, looking for what we call recognized environmental conditions or wrecks for the, for the TLAs. Um, <laughs> so if we find any wrecks, those, those will go into report. And these reports get very extensive, sometimes over an inch thick, because there's a lot of data. Um, if we find a wreck, we'll, we'll tell the, the uh, potential buyer that it might be an issue, something to study further. We call that a phase two if we go to study it further. Um, say if they had uh, an area where there was a discharge and you could tell it, we may go in and take surface samples. We may drill some borings, take soil boring samples, uh, take groundwater samples just to see if there is the potential for a contaminated area. Okay. What are some of the most common businesses that may require a phase one ESA to be performed, you know, for the next property owner? Um, a lot of that's up to um, the buyer's comfort. You know, do they do they think they need that potential innocent landowner defense? Um, banks will very often require it because they don't want to lend money on a property that that's not that valuable. That it's not the value you'd reach the value of the loan. Um, so a lot of a lot of it depends. But if it's um, many banks will say, all right, if it, there was a printer, a dry cleaner, a gas station, anybody used any kind of chemicals they're going to want at least a phase one. Why are these phase ones so important to have conducted before the property is developed into something new? Well, it's, it's so that they can take advantage of that innocent lantern in defense. I'll give you an example of a, a really, a real horror story that happened outside of Philadelphia many years ago, was they built a, a building on a former industrial site 
the soil and groundwater is contaminated, they put a daycare in that facility and the um, indoor air quality in that facility was affected by the soil and groundwater contamination. And wow. so that didn't turn out well. No, I guess not. So from what I'm understanding, the owner of the property is the owner of the contamination, whether or not it's their fault. It can be. Okay. What are some of the ramifications that a property own owner could face if they didn't have a phase one ESA conducted, but contamination is found later on down the line? Of the, uh, the EPA or the state regulatory agencies can force them to do a cleanup under those Superfund rules. Okay. Well, Alan, I think we've covered most of the most common questions that you and the other professionals here at EMS answer quite frequently. But just to review, a phase one ESA is conducted so that an environmental professional can go out and kind of scan for observable clues on a property. Recognize environmental conditions. Right. The wrecks. Okay. If nothing's found, then the phase two ESA is unnecessary. Correct. But if they are, then the much more investigative phase two will be required. And the environmental professionals will go out and look for things like distressed vegetation and maybe oil stains even. We could. And if we, if we do go to a phase two, um, since we're a full service company, we can give the, our clients an estimate of how much it will cost to clean it up. They can either walk away from the deal or use that information to get a better price. If you have any questions, in case we didn't answer yours today, please feel free to keep searching our website or check out some of our blog articles, or you could even give us a call to speak to one of our experts. So for Alan, I'm Brandy. Thank you for tuning in and watching and learning more about Phase 1 environmental site assessments.